you very much to the Royal Geographical Society for the chance to take part in this debate tonight. I think we're vying with each other to find the most awful photographs of, of waste tonight. Um, this, is, this is my best shot at it. Um, what, what I'm going to talk about is, is why is this happening and what can we do about it? So I'm, I'm trying to move the discussion on from our, our distinguished previous pre presenters. And um, a little bit about who we are, first of all. Um, the British Plastics Federation is based here in London. We were founded in 1933, which was the same year that high-density polyethylene was discovered, for those of you that are familiar with plastics. We've got about 400 member companies in membership, including a lot of recyclers. And I'm going to come back to recycling um, a little bit later on. We have a very good website. Do have a look at it if, you, if you'd like to learn more. Um, one thing that's on it is the plastics timeline. And for those of you that like to look at the history of plastics, it's not a very long history, have a look at our timeline, which takes you right back over the products and processes involved in our industry, and indeed the benefits that the products have brought to us as a society. Now, uh, last year, with our colleagues in Plastics Europe and the Packaging and Films Association, we launched the Plastics 2020 Challenge. And the mission of this is to try and lead the UK towards diverting plastics from landfill by 2020 to reduce the climate change impact, address the energy deficit, uh, used plastics are an energy source, and achieve a step change in the efficient use of resources. And our commitments are increasing the reuse of plastic products, reducing wastage and environmental impact, and doubling, this is particularly important, doubling the plastic packaging recycling uh, from 25% to 50% by 2020. Also supporting high energy efficiency, energy from waste applications, uh, where um, recycling is not, not an option for unrecyclables. Um, let's just talk about um, too much plastic today um, is a question that may be going through your minds. Well, plastics is a material of choice in the 21st century, as our, my colleagues here have said. Um, it is very much part of our everyday lives. Hard to imagine a process or function that does utilize it, even sitting here in this very august hall here. Uh, your mobile phone, credit cards, part of the seat, um, contents of handbag, inhaler, uh, all these things are plastic. Lego, the leading toy of the last century, um, is plastic. The Jif Lemon, the iconic Jif Lemon, is plastic. The Big Biro is plastic. One could go on for a long time about the everyday items we've got used to. Now, why is plastics chosen? Um, its characteristics are it is durable, flexible, it's lightweight, cost-effective, easy to utilize, highly resource-efficient, which I'll come on to next, environmentally beneficial, and saves lives in the developed and developing world. I'm particularly thinking there of uh, water pipes. We are facing water shortages, uh, getting worse and worse in many parts of the world. Also medical products as well. Just moving on to resource efficiency for a moment. Uh, plastics are a very resource efficient material. Of the world's oil production, only 4% is actually used for the production of plastic products. 86% is used for transport and heating. And by the very implication, is burnt away and gone. That fossil fuel used for energy, transport and heating is gone forever. Not the case with plastics, because there um, we have a material which can be recycled up to six times, and at the end of its useful life, when the molecules are broken down, it is actually a source of energy, which is going to become more and more important in the years uh, to come. Just a few things on the environmental uh, benefits. Reduction is one of the benefits. Lightweighting, we see this in, in parts for cars, aircraft, also in packaging. The lightweighting saves fuel. You get more miles per gallon if you use plastics uh, in, all those, in all those uses. It's energy saving in manufacturer transport and use. Um, a lot less energy is needed to, to produce plastics than, for example, uh, glass and, of course, uh, metals as well. And, of course, paper uses a huge amount of water and also energy too. And plastics packaging prevents wastage from field to kitchen. We are a 
64 million people here, we absolutely depend on good packaging, whatever it is, to get products fresh from the field to the kitchen and have a reasonable shelf life as well. In countries like India, um, food wastage, uh, because of the climate, but also because of lack of packaging, can be as much as 40% is actually wasted, whereas in Western Europe, it's more like 3%. Reuse, durability of plastics, its strength promotes reuse. And of course, we see uh, crates, trays, pallets constantly being reused, which are made out of plastic. And of course, it can be recycled and recovered as well as a material or indeed as energy. Now, plastics and recycling. Plastics industry does not want plastics landfill, dumped or littered. We want it back for recycling. That's what we want it for. We don't want to see it in the marine environment or indeed in any other environment. We want it back for recycling first and foremost. We are making progress. In fact, in the UK, rapid progress. 40% of all plastic bottles are recycled, but still only 78% of local authorities are actually collecting them. Why not 100%? Why can't we get more bottles uh, back and, and make use of them? 72% um, of milk bottles uh, were recycled in 2009, a big jump from 57% in 2008. 34,000 tonnes of construction use, PVC pipes, windows, flooring were recycled last year. 33% of expanded polystyrene packaging recycled. A lot of work is going on on mixed plastics recycling, food trays, tubs and pots. It's being developed, there's a lot of good research work going on, but it's still in its infancy, but there's a great deal uh, happening on that particular front at the moment. I want to show you one example. I, I rather like this one because I've actually seen it. This is a boardwalk in the Lake District wetlands which has been made out of half a million plastic bottles. It's, uh, it lasts uh, four times longer than wood. Of course, you can mould the surface, so it's a non-slip surface as well. And we're all familiar with the waste bins and the wheelie bins and the traffic cones and, of course, bottles. Uh, we have 100% recycled bottles these days. We're all familiar with these things. They're part of our everyday lives. But this is one example of a, perhaps a new direction that's being taken for something that is, needs to be quite permanent uh, as well. Um, facts are hard to find. We've heard from Simon and David some facts tonight, um, but Quantifying it is extremely difficult. There, there, there is a lack of good research around, I'm afraid. Marine litter is a global problem that is evident on our own beaches, in, in our own seas, as has been mentioned earlier. This is a global problem. Inexact science is not a good science, and we need a consensual commitment to obtain better information and commission good science. Now, why is plastics in the marine environment? Evidence suggests it's poor management and behaviour with many different parties to, to blame. I haven't time to go through them all and look at all the survey results. But Marine Conservation Society's Beach Watch in 2009 found 48% of beach litter is traceable to visitors. But illegal dumping at sea is also... Um, uh, by ships and leisure craft is also a source. There is a lack of uh, proper waste management in ports, to whether it's marinas or ports, to receive waste from ships. And um, you have to, to really have a step change in that to prevent dumping at sea. Uh, heavy waste sinks and stays on the seabed. Um, and we have to be realise that uh, uh, plastics waste can be gathered up. Uh, not all of it sinks to the sea, but it can actually be gathered up. In the USA, um, the cruise ship Royal Princess was fined £300,000 for dumping 20 bags of garbage overboard. So we do need to see um, the rules already in existence, the laws already in existence, being enforced even, even more. 13.8% um, of waste on beaches is fishing-related. Uh, fishing, fishermen, fishing boats, losing or dumping tackle and equipment. And um, I've mentioned the poor receptacles in ports as well. I'm going to come back to plastic pellets being found on beaches and talk about an initiative we have been taking on that, that as well. Getting to grips with the challenge. We want an end, uh, end of use plastic back for recycling and en energy recovery. We don't put used plastic in the sea. I call it used plastic. I don't use the term waste because it is a resource. 
which uh, must be used. It's not actually waste. It doesn't belong in the sea, and it's a global rep problem requiring global action. It's a complex issue involving many stages and parties, and all stakeholders need to work together to find solutions. Now I'm getting into what the plastics industry is doing to make a start to dealing with some of the top issues here. Behavioural change is absolutely vital. It's essential to change behaviour. And some of the things we're doing, we're working with the Marine Conservation Society to look at how we do go about this. One thing we're doing at the moment is piloting an educational programme in schools, such as the Cool Seas Roadshow and Bottle Champions, a recycling campaign in primary schools. I'll just show you this sheet. It's currently going on and we'll evaluate it uh, near the end of the year. Here you can... Ten, uh, recycle 10 plastic bottles at home, these are primary school children, bring the bottle tops to school and win a brand new school, uh, school sports strip for your school team made out of recycled plastic bottles. We're also helping uh, DEFRA and Keep Britain Tidy plan for a national litter convention in mid-December. This will feature new logo and branding for an, a national action plan which we very much support. We've worked with Keep Britain Tidy for many years and we are helping, uh, I'm on the Litter Challenge Group, and we are going to assist with that. We also need to look at the provision of bins on beaches to make a practical contribution. I live, I live one and a half minutes from a beach, and that particular beach is well supplied with bins which are emptied regularly. Not all beaches I've seen, and I'm sure you've seen, uh, have that uh, uh, luxury, and we've got to see if we can do something um, about it. I said I would talk about... Uh, pellet loss. And pellets are being found on uh, beaches, UK beaches and around the world. And we have launched this in 2009, a operational manual to prevent pellet loss. And it aims with best practice to try and prevent our raw material escaping into the environment. And raw material is money down the drain, it's bad for the environment, and in factories it causes slips, <coughs> trips and falls, so there's also a health and safety aspect as well. So it's absolutely daft to allow such material to be lost, whether it's in the factory or indeed in transportation. And companies are invited to sign an Operation Clean Suite pledge that they are implementing the manual, and the BPF is coordinating this being rolled out across Europe. New research. I'd mentioned the dearth of good quality research. You know, we, we are a planet covered with oceans and it's difficult to, to do a, a comprehensive assessment of exactly what's going on. Um, we are sponsoring a study by the University of Ghent into the occurrence of microplastics in mussels and lugworms in France, Belgium and Netherlands. This is actually on the coast itself. I know some work has been done in laboratories, but this will actually uh, be looking at what is happening on the coasts. And we welcome very much the Marine Conservation Society being on the steering group of this and uh, uh, keeping a, an eye on how, how this survey proceeds. And work started in October and should be completed in a year's time and will give us some valuable information about uh, the ingestion of plastic particles by these marine organisms. Since I've mentioned Europe, I want to talk about a big pan-European plastics project on marine litter. Uh, the European plastics industry has proposed a waste-free oceans project to the EU, EU Commission's Life Plus program, and we've applied for 50% funding. The rest of the resource will, will come from us. Some of the main actions, I haven't the time to go through all of them. This is a very comprehensive program, but I'm going to just list some of the main actions here. We're going to map current legislation and policy and its effectiveness. We're going to uh, have communications and awareness raising for fishermen, port authorities, local authorities, waste management companies, the shipping industry, and schools. Education is very important for tackling behavioral problems. And we want to communicate best practice in waste management from wherever there's best practice in the world on dealing with this problem, we want to make sure that that is spread far and wide. We also want training seminars and workshops for fishermen, port and marina workers, consumers and schools. And we're also going to roll out voluntary in in industry initiatives such as Operation Clean Suite, which I described earlier. We want, to look at the we want to look at best practices on the prevention of marine litter. 
is law enforcement and our fines working? We also wanted to look at the removal of marine litter, uh, fishing for litter exercises. This has been conducted in the Baltic. It's also been conducted in the Netherlands, where fishermen have uh, been paid a bounty for fishing for uh, litter. And about in one uh, operation a few years back, about 500 tons of litter was not all plastics. Uh, was taken out of the ocean. So we need to look at the effectiveness of that. And again, we're grateful to the Marine Conservation Society, who agreed to be uh, a partner and scrutinize how this uh, develops. Next spring, we'll know if the Life, Life Plus application is successful. But even if it's not successful, I undoubtedly parts of this program will proceed anyway. Now I want to just uh, sp uh, wind up a little bit upon the future. And uh, there's no doubt that marine litter is now on the media agenda and that of our industry as well. We do find, and I'm not talking of UK particularly, but of European governments uh, as well, that it doesn't seem hugely important to governments, this particular issue. But tighter legislation and policing is key, and that's where governments come in. We do strongly support the Marine Conservation Society call for more, a more government-coordinated strategy on dealing with the question of uh, marine litter. And climate change and overpopulation undoubtedly are going to increase pressure on, on our oceans. Technological advance will help. For example, uh, plastics technology is advancing all the time. We, in some decades' time, we may have intelligent fishing nets which allow uh, marine, uh, organisms, living organisms, to escape and the waste to stay in the nets. And if you need a, a place for your evening tea, perhaps the net can be programmed to keep a place for you as well. So such advances undoubtedly will help in the future. And behavioral change is so important. Seeing waste as a resource is absolutely vital to tackling this problem. Really, from children uh, upwards, we, we have to put over that message. But now we're here in the uh, Royal Geographical Society, famed for having it distinguished explorers giving presentations here over, the, over many years, famed for its support for exploration. So I wanted to finish with uh, another view, looking ahead beyond our planet, which might set your thoughts going. Um, here's another view from the futurologist Ray Hammond. The, he, he says here, I've long been of the opinion that human evolutionary destiny is to merge human biology with machine intelligence to create a successor species, a semi-plastic species, which freed of biological time constraints, will be free to leave this planet and begin to colonize the universe with a form of intelligence that can only be described as post-human. I let, let your imaginations run as to what that intelligence could be. It could be a merging of David and Plastiki. It could be <coughs> something like Pamela Anderson. Uh, I let your, <laughs> let your imaginations run right. But, uh, what we, but to create this new universe for us and this vision of the future, we do need our plastics back again for recycling and we need it back from the seas as well to create these exploratory creatures. Thank you very much. Thank you.